Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. Let's take a look at the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. The major story is talking about minimum wage where the Labour is saying we won't accept 100,000 Naira as the new minimum wage. A gyro in Geneva says no strike for now. The local governments can't pay 62,000 Naira, that's according to Algon. Suspense as tripartite committee submits report to Tinubu. I mean, all of this at the end of the day is up to the president. You find this story on page four. Jais Bank finances 10,000 hectare rice farm in Bauchi. Aircraft carrying Malawi vice president missing and search is underway. Dangote, Sino truck targets 60% local content with a new plant. And um, beside that, as a pictorial of the International Labour Organization, a meeting in Geneva, Switzerland, where the uh, leader of the NLC, Joa Jairo, is in attendance. Below the headmaster, we see 30 representatives as reps advocate for six year single term for president and governors. Hoodlums jump fence and still sell ram in the FCT Council. Bandits kill four officers and 22 others in Katsina Police. Now, these are the stories that you'll find on the Daily Trust newspaper. Let's take a look at the punch, where the major story is about smuggled Nigerian patrol floods the West African market and sells at 1,700 Naira per litre. Patrol hits 1,672 Naira per litre in Benin, Cameroon. In Benin, it's that amount. In Cameroon, it's 2,062 naira per litre. In Liberia, 1,428 naira. And in Mali, 2,128 naira. The 280,000 litres intercepted in Adamawa, Sokoto, Kebbi, Katsina, Borno, and Taraba, and also Ogun State. That's according to the detailed um, uh, information. Now, Below or above the headmaster, we see minimum wage labor insists on 250,000 naira awaits Tinubu's verdict. NLC president berates governors and says presidents will do the right thing. The federal government services a debt with $2.2 billion in five months. That's according to CBN. Tinubu removes Arase as a PSC chair, appoints Arugungu. Uh, below the major story, we see a pictorial. Um, of the South West Governors Forum insists on state police and elects Sawolu as chair. Refs propose a rational uh, presidency, six-year single term. Police foil American suicide attempt on Third Mainland Bridge. 2.7 billion naira fraud ex-director testifies against Sirica. Now, these are the stories that you'd find on the punch newspaper uh, but then due to time of course uh, let's just head on to reviewing these papers uh, there we have uh, dr theophilus abba he's a program director of daily trust foundation good morning doctor it's good to have you as usual good morning of thank course. you mm -hmm. so let's start with uh, something that i think we spoke about last week it's been re-echoed for the longest time due to the long period of negotiation the new minimum wage what is your take on what the labor is saying uh considering we awaited um, some kind of um, say decision from the federal government from the president yesterday but it seemed to be a bit of silence in that axis what is your take on this well um, labor is saying uh, it will accept 100,000 naira as a minimum wage um, 100,000 naira uh, to us in terms of naira is a lot of money but then by the time you look at what 100,000 naira can buy you know, you now discover that look, it is not um, a lot of money hmm. because a bag of rice such yesterday was about seventy-four thousand naira. Now let's assume a family um, of five I can consume half bag of rice in a month, just hypothetically. Uh, you give them, I mean, four one hundred thousand naira, they remove some thirty-six thousand from you to buy a bag of rice. Um, a basket of tomato as at yesterday mm. was about 14,000 naira. That basket of tomato was about 6,500 about three weeks ago. Those are small baskets. Those are small baskets. You know? So if you hand, a, I mean, a 100,000 naira to a worker, you know, and you say, okay, that is your pay for the month, go and live on it. As at today, it is not, I mean, feasible. Mm. 
Now, what we are advocating is not the quantity of money. I think I've said that previously. That look, we need to ensure that our currency, the I mean, our currency has value. This one hundred thousand era, if you if you if you if you think back to, let's say March like last year, March last year, a dollar was about four hundred naira, five hundred naira official rate. Let's assume it's seven hundred naira official rate. Today, a dollar is about one thousand four hundred, one thousand. Guess it's one thousand five hundred. Now, um, that that means that. Uh, this 100,000 naira is less than $100. It's less than even $80. You know, and we can't, I mean, a typical Nigerian cannot live on, on just $80. Because the minimum wage in other parts of the world, I think we did, we did an IC last week, mm. on the average it was 150 on the average. Look at some. So I we saw Punch writing about the petrol price. You know, in uh, Mali, in all this. But do you know that the minimum wage in these countries, the, the minimum wage is higher than it's the higher than minimum Nigeria, wage. Indeed. Minimum wage. So it's not actually it's not actually the quantity of money. It's actually the value of, of money. There was a time that the CIFA was so weak that if you went to Benin Republic with two thousand naira, two thousand naira, you were collecting something like fifteen thousand CIFA. But now CIFA is stronger in terms of purchasing power than the naira so you see there is there has to be a way of rescuing the naira let me put it that way it has to be a rescuing the naira, rescuing the naira. now <clears throat> we know that we cannot compare what we have now with what is happening in, uh, in lebanon but we are taking we are, we are going that lane because apart from the fact that uh, the prices of things have gone up one of the things we are facing now is scarcity if you go to the market uh, you may not find enough yam for competition. What I mean is this. The pet, those selling yams are very few. And so you cannot even have enough yam to buy. If you want to buy grains, beans, I went to the market with, to buy a bag of beans earlier in the year. It was around 54,000. Go and find out what the bag of beans is today. Yeah. Because these beans, I mean, the, the beans is not available. But well, isn't that the reason so, why the federal government is planning on reducing taxes for so that way for importation of food? Well, the, the thing is, um, if, the, if the government can flood the market with imported food, at least as a temporary measure, mm. because we want, to, we want to encourage production, if they can flood the market and bring down the prices of things, you know? So we are, I'm advocating that instead of just talking about 100,000, let's talk about bringing down prices. How yeah. can we bring down the price of petrol? I mean, not just petroleum, price of cost of transportation. How can we bring down the price of food items? How can we bring down the price of essential goods that we use every day? You know, you use toothpaste. Toothpaste that used to sell for 200, 300 is now selling for 2,000. Colgate, we used to buy Colgate in my house for maybe 200, 300. You can just send it, go and get one Colgate. Mm. Now, it is 2,000. You know, if we can <clears throat> bring down, the majors are put in place to bring down the price of these, of these items, mm -hmm. then the 100,000 naira would be enough. Possible. It is not the quantity of money that matters. It's actually what the money can buy. So the labor should <clears throat> bring more um, a valid negotiation in order to join... <clears throat> well, I think the ball is in the, in the court of the government, not okay. on the court, in the court of labor. Because government must put in, uh, put in place measures... You know, I think there is something we are seeing on the... Yeah, I mean, uh -huh. this is based on the minimum wage of yeah, top minimum oil wage produced top, in African okay. countries. In Look America. at Gabon. The minimum wage is 376,000. Yeah, look at Pretoria, Guinea, 300. You see, if, if you look at the Naira, 30,000. Even Sudan. It, okay, yeah, Sudan, Sudan, Sudan is, is, seven, is, is almost 8,000. Yeah. Yes. Now, so if you look at Angola, look at... So, you, it's going that... At, at, I mean, the rate we are... I mean, what we are paying now is very, very low. We cannot yeah. compare ourselves with Sudan. And it's all because of the dollars. Let now, our exchange now exchange the Ghana rate. is paying 38000 but the value of the Ghanaian currency is it's more than the value of... The I think the Ghanaian currency is about 10, 10, 10 CD to a dollar mm. or something like that. So if you look at this, you discover that we are 
you know, we are way we, behind. We, we are way behind. I mean, experts have been calling on the same thing, saying while you're asking us to pay higher for electricity okay, look, look and, and petrol, yes. then uh, you have to add up the salary to yes. reach it that way. So this is exactly what is going we on. Chad is paying about 150,000. Look at Chad. Yeah. So uh -huh. it's, it's really the same so, so on that part. So, so do you think, I mean, um, Ajayro is saying there is no strike for now, if at all, the outcome. No, what I, do you think is the best I outcome? commend that. There shouldn't be strike. You know, it has to be constant engagement. Mm. You understand? Then it, the government must now put in place measures. Now, if you, if you know that there's scarcity of rice, there's scarcity of beans, and you can import, import beans from Burkina Faso, you can import beans from other countries, you know, you can bring them in so that the prices can fall. Because what Nigerians are complaining about is not just the increase in the uh, petroleum so, price, yeah. but even the consumer goods are no, are no longer available. They are very, very scarce. Indeed. Go to a uh, supermarket. It's good that what you find there are food items. You know, Coca-Cola, malt, some of the beverages. Yeah. Where you used to find electronics, you know, they now flood the place with food items. Mm. Which means that there is already scarcity with us. I even don't see that we get from our farms. Yam, yam is not available. Yam, yam. I, I mean, I saw a, a, a clip of a, a yam being cut into two. A tube of yam has been shared into two, and it's been sold at almost the same price the of same one. Price. Uh, see, it, it's really so we are scary. Facing, uh, we are facing scarcity at the moment. If you look at Gary, you know, Gary is even better, if, although the price of Gary too has gone up. Mm -hmm. You know, but, you know, Gary, you plant cassava, after one year you can harvest. Mm -hmm. And then maybe when you plant the cassava, um, is not exposed to, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, the attacks that we that we see on other farms. So Gary is even better because we can have Gary. But beans, yam, rice, all those things that are like the staple food in our, uh, the price have gone up. So if you pay us hundred thousand dollars minimum, which fine, but bring down the prices of, of mm, good, uh, indeed. food items. Indeed, we'll just have to wait and see how that progresses. Mm -hmm. uh, Doctor, I want to hear your take on the thirty um, reps advocating. We, we've seen a lot of reps coming out to make um, pass pass some kind of bill, uh, but they're advocating for six year single term for president and governors instead of a, a four year, which you would come back again and do another four years equivalent to eight years. What is your take on this situation? Do you think this is a bill that should be passed right now is is a priority now i think uh, the advantage of having a six-year single term is that you have enough time to execute projects now if you if you have six years you can say okay this project can take as long as five years we can start it now and complete before the end of our tenure and for to a great extent that can reduce um the number of abandoned projects if the reps do their work i say the reps do that because most times they don't follow up. Most times they don't scrutinize. Most times they don't put government under pressure. Most times they want to be in the good books of, of, of the president. I, have, I mean, has to assume I want to be in the good books of the governor. You know, I think I heard the, the speaker of the, the speaker, the deputy speaker of the house saying, he said, oh, we have to be, we have to collaborate with government to this. No, your job is not to collaborate. Your job is to put government under pressure. You are supposed to, uh, to I mean, to, to, to scrutinize what government does as, and, and ensure that you know, the right things are done. Now, six years single term, the advantage is this, that you can execute, pro I, mean, I mean, big projects over a period of six years. But the disadvantage is this, for a system that is corrupt and very, very fluid, if you give somebody six years single term, you can steal all the money for six years, and you will not do anything. You say, well, let another person come and do it. You see, the advantage of four year, two uh, terms is mm. this, you, you, do, you work hard your first four years because you want to be re-elected. Yeah. The second, I mean, uh, tenure, you can yeah. not begin to steal. I'm not saying that we're proving that we should steal. <laughs> you know, but if this man that you are voting as president or governor knows that, well, after six years, he goes. He, will, he can do anything. He can manipulate every system. He can, he can steal. Yeah. Because right now, we don't have check and balance in the, uh, the way it should be. I mean, if the House of Assemblies are clapping hands for governors, the governor says remove my deputy, remove his deputy. The governor brings a budget to you. You don't even scrutinize. You don't even at the end of the month, even if the public account, the public account does not even go through the auditor general's report. You know, they just pass whatever I mean so given to them by the governor. Mm. They don't hold them. Up. They don't ask governors any question. Now you give that governor six years. He, he, I mean, he steals money for six years and, and goes away. The same mm. thing with the president. 
You don't ask, okay, we had a, a system where, I mean, uh, the waste and means were just being utilized unnecessarily beyond the law. The waste, a whole lot of money, 20 something trillion, was taken out of the system in the name of it, it, was, it, is, it is expedient because the president asked for it. You know, and that is not how to run. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so at run, the end of the day, the why there's an advantage is also an the advantage is that you can it's a good project. You have enough. You, uh, maybe at the first year, you are just settling now. After the first year, you can now drive very well. It's uh -uh. okay. Let's go. Yeah. You understand? But the disadvantage outweighs might that outweigh the advantage. I mean, it, <laughs> All right. We'll just have to wait and see the progression of uh, this. Of course, um, uh, advocating and this um, suggestion by uh, the 30 reps. Thank you so much, Dr. Theophilus Abba, for joining us this morning to dissect and review the front pages. Appreciate your time. Thank you. All right, and with that, of course, uh, we have come to the end of Daybreak on Trust Television. Do not forget uh, to follow us across all our social media platforms and you can join our YouTube live stream for more news programs and documentaries. And also, please do stick around. At the top of the hour, Adeni Adjishafia would bring you 360 Sport. I am Sumaya Abubakar. Do have a lovely Tuesday.